So Nigel, it's uh, round 10 and it's been a very good day for you so far. It has. Uh, I won very uh, comfortably uh, against Altai Safali from Azerbaijan. With tough. black, with black, and uh, strangely enough, it wasn't very tough at all. I mean, I I was winning uh, after I don't know 18 moves or something like that. I mean, pretty tough pairing for England um, yeah. after yeah. you know going down yesterday, and yeah. then you find yourselves playing Azerbaijan, serious team. Yeah, well, it was the day before because we drew against Iran uh, yesterday. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of. Um, lot of uh, good teams about and um, I, I mean if you're going to get a high placing you if eventually you have to play well against some strong teams so I'm hoping we can win today I think we must have good chances but uh, <laughs> you know it's up to the boys but so far you, all in all you've had a pretty good tournament personally haven't you uh, yeah I mean not exceptional uh, but um, yeah I'm quite um, I, I'm playing in, in excess of my rating and uh, it, it may sound a bit stupid but I scored one and a half points last mm. <laughs> last Olympiad I was so uh, at that time I had the the function of, of delegate of the English Chess Federation and although I was trying to concentrate on the games it just wouldn't work you need a clear mind and just just focus on on what's in front of you yeah. So earlier in the tournament, uh, you, you caused a few headlines. There was a little bit of a, a scandal, no less. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, well, uh, I was um, um, playing uh, against Li Chao from China, and I'd gone to the bathroom, and then uh, this arbiter, Jamie Kenmuir from Australia, um, he stopped me for an electronic check during the game uh, now how, how sorry just how far into the game was it uh i think i had uh i mean i estimate i had about 30 minutes left for 20 moves at this point okay so that's already quite, quite serious yes, it is. and yeah. uh, I, I, I mean I haven't, I haven't emphasized i mean it was a totally inappropriate moment for for doing it because i was in time pressure uh, i haven't stressed this point because i think the the whole principle is fundamentally wrong to, you know, to test during a game yeah so if they do it after five seconds you know after the clock has started mm. it's also wrong so uh um yeah but just in addition I happen to be in, in, in time pressure. But is there this rule still in operation that you have to inform the arbiters before you visit the bathroom? Uh, I've ab I, I think it's something uh, which either they've dropped. I, in fact, I, I, I have never done it in this event. So it's, it's not being enforced. Mm. Maybe one or mm. two people in the first um uh rounds or t or two you know mm. inform the arbiters i haven't done it at all so why do you think this arbiter decided to choose you and choose this moment to try and test you well um i, I think he's an idiot uh he is a political appointee he's been fast tracked as um uh you know uh, what do they call them this category a arbiter uh, it's they have different tiers of arbiter and he's been fast-tracked because of his ap political affiliations I wrote about him actually two years ago in new in chess. I, uh, I refer to him um, in issue number six page 39 as an absolute menace and um, He's proven it uh, yet again. So okay. So do you think he was maybe? Uh, getting his own back uh, I think he, it is probably the only opportunity for him. I mean, this is a person who, quite frankly, is not fit to clean my boots. And, you know, here he's been given some authority and uh, he tries to disturb me during a very, very important game. And what exactly did he ask you to do? Uh, he just came uh, to, I mean, it was over very quickly because I basically pushed my way past him. So he came with his electronic thing and, uh, like, you know, like an airport scanner yeah, type air, thing. Airport yeah. scanner, yeah. And I just sort of brushed him out of the way. 
Exactly. And and so this is the match where England won by 3-1. You won your game. And what happened immediately after the game? Immediately after the game, as soon as it was finished, uh, there, were, there was an arbiter waiting for me and um, our captain had already been informed and I was taken to uh, a room where they uh, check people very, very thoroughly. Actually, you know, they're checking your ears and I'm waiting uh, with the scanner. They, they detect tiny amounts of, of metal. Mm. So, um, um, you know, I was disappointed not to get the rubber gloves, but maybe next time. <laughs> and, and how long did this check take? Uh, it took a few minutes. To, it was it was very thorough, you know. And of course, they didn't find anything. And if they would look at the game, they would also <laughs> realise that at some point I blundered on the <laughs> losing on the spot, and another point I I blundered giving away, uh, allowing him to draw, and uh, that was a typical game. But um, actually, it was it was a very very interesting was, game, wasn't it? Because you had to withstand a big attack, yeah, didn't you? It was a huge attack, and it, it was. Um, I mean, for me, this was my game of the, uh, the the tournament. I mean, mistakes notwithstanding, because it was a pressure situation, and uh, you know, and, and I held on, I held on very, more than held on very well. So yeah. you held your nerve in yeah, a very tough. It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me take you away from from that little incident to uh, happier times because you have uh, a very good record in Baku now was it 1983 Correct. your first trip here tell us about this tournament you played yeah. in 1983 in Baku yeah well I played a tournament here which um, uh, it wasn't let's say a super strong uh, Soviet tournament, but it, it had uh, a lot of people who were grandmasters uh, or who would um, later become grandmasters. So there were players like um, as my parish Philly, John Spielman was here, you know, uh, Paul van der Steren, Taimanov was around, Brashkovsky, Bagirov, I think, mm. and so on and so forth. So, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, very well uh, well-known players. And how old were you at the time? I was 18 at the time and I, I scored plus five winning the tournament outright undefeated and just to give you um, a little re re indication of how things have changed so I'm one of the very very few players to have won uh, non-Soviet players to have won a tournament in the Soviet Union and I missed the GM norm by half a point. Okay but we should say that you know in those days in the Soviet Union every single tournament yeah. was so strong because they had banks of players yeah, yeah. in reserve yeah. who never actually even went to yeah. the west and they just but they were still fantastically strong so yeah. that was one of finished, incredible the, the guy who finished second i did uh, gusenov uh, he, he was unrated at the time and that's basically what mm. buggered my uh, my <laughs> gm norm um i mean he later became a, a gm um not a super strong one but uh, you know respectable GM and can you compare what it was like visiting Baku in 1983 with how it is now um, well it's almost unrecognizable um, I mean actually it was a bit grubby as well that's you know you've got uh, that's well, one of the things and uh, the hotel that I was in in tourists they were always called in tourists that has been re demolished and the, the is where the Hilton is now but I think if I'm not mistaken uh, Akopian also came to um, uh, see this and Emil Sotovsky told me he was a spectator and of course Gary Kasparov came along as well so three local boys <laughs> all born in Baku and uh, of course Gary's been airbrushed out of uh, history uh, he's um, uh, you know I mean they had to remove his uh, face from uh, one of the stands here the security I wouldn't allow Kasparov's image on one of the stands. So Baku's greatest chess player yeah, just it. Just yeah, airbrushed. Airbrushed. It's like Leon Trotsky in the uh, Politburo <laughs> <laughs> photos, you know, he's just disappeared. <laughs> Fascinating. He doesn't have a pickaxe in his head yet. <laughs> Maybe that's coming. <laughs> okay. 
but of course nowadays um i mean as you say the city is unrecognizable yeah. and but, but i was here about 10 years ago i played a very very nice open tournament actually it's, i mean seriously it was one of the the most enjoyable open tournaments uh that i played in my life i had really fantastic conditions um and I played a, a next a, the next year, and the next year it was good, but less good. And it was one sort of slight disappointment, because if it had been the other way round, I would have been yeah. ecstatic, you know. But I had a great event, and then somehow they didn't have quite as much money the next year. <laughs> but the place has really changed. There's a lot of these buildings have just gone up in 10 years. Uh, of course, there are problems with the economy now as the oil price has collapsed. And so this sort of frenetic uh, building has, um, uh, well, it's not exactly stopped, but uh, it's been scaled back. But even so, I mean, incredible funds have been lavished on the Olympiad, and Absolutely. and people people seem yeah. very happy here. Hotels I, are good. I, I uh, you know, this is my seventeenth consecutive Olympiad, um, and uh, in many respects, uh, it's one of the the best. I mean, the the security is is like too much, uh, and uh, uh, and some of this um, is. Some of it is FIDE's f fault. I mean, this um, nonsense with, um, you know, harassing players during the game, which is against the FIDE rules, by the way. Mm. It's against Article 12.2D. Uh, and it's I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably also, you know, if, if I put my lawyer's hat on, which I don't have, uh, it would be <laughs> uh, against Article 12.2A, uh, B and C as well, but definitely against 122 D, which is about disturbing the players, and that's just, uh, it's an abomination. Um, so, um, uh, uh, several arbiters have come to me, and, and they've told me privately that I'm absolutely right. Mm. Um, and, um, I mean, even the chief arbiter here told me he totally disapproves mm. of this. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I hope that my little protest uh, has... Uh, made people aware. Uh, I'm very, very disappointed because there are a, a number of famous players here who have uh, been stopped during their games and they've allowed these checks. And, you know, chess players have become sheep. Uh, you know, we're living in a dictatorship and, and people are afraid. And when something is clearly nonsense, you have to stand up. Thank you, Nigel.